What's up, guys? Eric and Sam here, and uh, we're bringing you what our up? review of Final Fantasy 15. <laughs> and I've spent a good 29 hours playing this game, so I think I got a good you handle. Can see it on the screen. Yeah, I think I got a good handle of uh, ah. what this game's about and if it's worth your time. <laughs> um, and that's what this video is supposed to tell you. Um, Look how glistening they are. Yeah, well, it was just raining, so. Uh, let's go through the uh, menus oh, are you sure first. They're here? not like some kind of weird strippers. Yes. <laughs> I think I would have figured that out by now. But they do have like a like a black <laughs> thing. Going on. So I think that's their color. Anyway, so we, um, as far as the menus are concerned with this game, um, you know, it, it's it's one of the first. I, I I didn't play any of the other Final Fantasies after ten, so I'm not sure about the other ones. But it is. A grand, wide open, not sandbox because you can't do whatever you want, but um, definitely open world. And the loading screens are minimal, um, only when you go to sleep or if you choose to fast travel. And be, being given that information, it looks rather decent. Some things look better than others, like this dude Gladiolus's uh, tattoos look like pieces of shit. Um, it could have just been that the tattoo artist was a piece of shit. No, dude. They don't look like they're actually... He looks like he's wearing like those sleeves that pieces of shit wear. Maybe he is. Pieces. What do you know? Well, I mean... Okay, I guess. Yeah, shut yeah. up. Just first things first, we thought we'd start with the menu here. Um, so as you can see, um, we, we, we have uh, experience and, and a level system here. I really hate that blonde guy. But the leveling system here is also different from the other Final Fantasies that have come before, as far as I'm to understand, um, where you don't level battle per battle. You gain experience, and then that experience is then given to you uh, when you sleep or otherwise make camp for the evening. Um, and, speaking of that, there is a day and a night cycle in this game, and the world is different between those cycles. You know, during the day, it's very vibrant. At night, no one's on the road, and even uh, members of your crew kind of want to persuade you to turn back or otherwise, you know, turn in for the night because demons, and they're just a completely different kind of creature than what you normally run into, a kind of patrol the night. These demons are way more powerful than you. So, I, <laughs> I, so at least for this area that I'm in right now, they're at least 10 levels higher than me, and I've been doing absolutely every side quest I can get my hands on. And a lot of these side quests are kind of super repetitive and redundant. Like these ones right oh, here. You if you didn't want to play fishing buddies? If you're not into certain aspects of the game such as fishing, which is one of the things that one of the characters really likes to do as a hobby, some of these side quests are dumb. You know, some of these side quests are not fun at all and, and, and it, it just sucks to do them. Some of them are super repetitive. This guy asks you to go get special gems for him, and generally it involves... He kind of reminds me of Joffrey, so now I want to punch him in the face. <laughs> he does, but he actually has like an Italian accent. Like, hey, like, hey, oh, oh, his name's Dino. Hey, oh, come over here. Yeah, gobble -goo. Now I just hate him more. <laughs> yeah. A lot of this shit seems like it's way, way, way below you, especially because of the path you're now set on trying to reclaim your empire and yeah. meet up with your the love of your life. Uh, by the name of Luna Freya, and that's her actual name. Out. Yeah, Luna Freya. <laughs> Not trying very hard, are they? No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I made that distinction too. But I mean, um, there's the, there there are. Uh, I say that because she looks like Luna Lovegood from the Harry Potter movie. Like, yeah. It looks like they legit just you know, facial map that actress. I, I mean, I guess, <laughs> and made her more Asian looking. I don't know. She didn't look that Asian to me. I don't know. But um, so in this game. Among all the other quests are uh, quests to take out um, like like monsters. You, you bounty hunt, and and uh, every once in a while you get to like watering holes of sorts, little towns, and in that town there's like a bar or a tavern, and you pick up these hunter quests from that bar or tavern, and they're spread all around here. This dude who is a fellow hunter asks you to go retrieve the dog tags of fallen hunters. The main quests are always in red, um, and they always kind of, they're always on the map for you to see. This motherfucker asks you just to go, just go farm. 
Go farm me some shit and bring it back. Like, just, like, rake and hoe shit? Hmm, well, it's not those actions, but essentially, yeah. Like, the little items are on the ground, you pick them up. Oh, okay, I have these items, let's go back. Like, a, a ton of fetch quests. Where all it is, is, as you can see, it's 3,000 experience. So... Oh, you just want me to walk somewhere, go pick some shit, sh shit up and walk it back to you? Cool beans. And, because of the different kinds of abilities you can unlock, um, which I'm going to talk about in just a second, um, driving around and doing stuff like this will get you more AP or action points to then turn around and invest in further skills. So doing these things, not only is it profitable for like a reward, for like gill or items or an, or an experience, but also action points. So I'd imagine that aftermath of the astral war would tell you why they're a demon warrior. Nope, this is actually a dude wanting you to take pictures. God damn. Yeah. So, um, there are four people in this group and each, each, each of these people have something that they like to do as a hobby. Fishing, hiking or otherwise exploring, cooking, and taking photographs. So cooking is cool. A lot of dude. these, a lot of these quests kind of revolve around those things. Right? Fishing, exploring, can right. not focus on the Joffrey lookalike? <laughs> Pictures. Food. So as, as far as this is concerned, you got four team members, and each of those team members can have multiple items. Generally, you, gener I mean, Noctis is special, where you can have an, like uh, four uh, main weapons and then, and then a couple different accessories based on what you've unlocked. And then, yeah, he is the king. And then also they have these different kinds of outfits. Now, I haven't lock, un unlocked any additional ones yet. I'm only in Chapter 6. But it seems as though you can unlock un additional ones. And based on the ones that you um, wear, you get different uh, boosts to strength, boosts to health, boosts to critical striking, and boosts to defense and stuff of that nature. A as of right now, the items don't really do too much for you. It's just like a little bit more HP, a little bit more defense, a little bit more... Um, of max HP, um, you know, a little bit more strength, um, you know, a little bit more magic, stuff like that. And so each guy is good with something specific. Um, so as you can see, and this is this He's is the only Sam's one favorite I find guy. Tolerable. Um, as you can see, you have a technique which is the special that you're you're able to have them do in combat. And I've unlocked a few here. Um, this one specifically allows um, he he imbues. Uh, the main character, Noctis, which is the only guy you're able to actually control in combat, with the element of uh, choice to fight that particular target that you're locked onto at the time that you enact this 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 technique. But he also has stuff like you know uh, defense, rescuing people from danger, and and also marking an enemy, which which allows you to do like multiple uh, you can uh, warp strike multiple guys at the same time. That brings us to upgrading. Now, um, I don't. Again, I haven't played any of the more recent Final Fantasies, but in Final Fantasy X, it was this gigantically huge sphere grid. In this, it breaks it up into sections. Um, this is specific to you um, and, and, you, and you and your group, really. I think this is actually specific to you. Yeah, this is specific specific to you um, and the different kinds of things you're able to do as you can see it, it attributes a, a point a point system here so that that costs 10 points this costs 28 points um, and so on and so forth um, so that allows you to do more damage in specific situations this um, allows you to work in tandem with the different um, members of the group this upgrades everybody's level this here um, is more about uh, ex exploration and more about uh, kind of uh, doing doing what they like to do. Um, everything that you're exposed to in this game, these characters respond to. So if you are at a tavern and you, and you eat a specific meal, this dude Ignis, and that's his hobby, he cooks, will remember that and will create a recipe off that meal that you eat. This right here is something that you unlock a smidge later into the game. It's called the Armager, and it's kind of like going. Uh, like, yeah, <laughs> it's very, it's very dumb, very dumb. But it is uh, like going Super Saiyan. 
um, where you kind of just go nuts for it's a short a period of time. Name. If they named it something else, I wouldn't it, find it so easy. It, to it, it, it. It, it's like a burst. It's a burst damage uh, attack, and you build it up by um, off. by fighting enemies, but also it, if you get the proper uh, upgrades here by just attacking and 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 getting damage. Then we have magic, which is completely different from the previous Final Fantasies that I've played, uh, Final Fantasy X specifically, um, where uh, magic isn't something that you unlock. It isn't something that you have to get upgrades for and then unlock a certain complexities of spells. In this particular um, game, you have access to that from the very get-go. It's just you have to have the elements by which the magic is, uh, is, is drawn from, and I'll explain that in a second, um, but then you can then um, make it even more complex of a spell by adding different items to it. Um, that give you different abilities and, and, and give the spell different abilities. And then this is just all about healing and actually when, when a, uh, one of your teammates goes down, getting them out of danger and, and stuff like that. Having them hey, use first guy. aid kits and stuff like that. This is the techniques that you use during battle. So as you can see here, these only apply to Gladiolus. I don't fucking know. I just call him Gladiolus. Fuck it. Um, so there's different ones here that he can use, different ones I here. Use that, different ones here that... The guy prompt out can use different ones here that Ignis can use, um, and it's just your and it really it gives you a whole lot to kind of dig into um, as far as that's Gladio concerned. Was just a show. That, that's what the one dude calls him, Gladiator. So. But uh, so yeah. They didn't hear about that. So this, so that's that's this that's this this tech tree and it's rather simple it kind of breaks it up for you and it just it depends on your play style and you're given free reign to play however you want there's three different kinds of magic here there's fire ice and lightning and let's just make a spell now i i've made three already just in my time here um and and as you can see some of them are specific some of them are where oh it just casts all three at the same time some of them are okay it casts one but up to three times um, and then it casts fire -o, which is an advanced version of fire, five times really hard. And as you can see here, wow. um, on the right side there, it gives, on the far right, it gives you how potent it is, which is how strong it is. And then to the left of that, how many times you're able to use it. So as we make it here, you kind of just, all right, I'm going to dip this much of fire into this, this much of lightning, and this much of ice. And then you can stop there if you want, or you can add items from your inventory to kind of make it that much more hardcore. Um, so this one right here makes it makes it do these uh, random up to twice. Um, this one does it at random up to five times. You know, up to two times. This one only just does it. Do, this one only just does it regularly with each with with each element, but it allows you to do that five times, which is more than normal. Um, this one uh, because it's a potion type item. It casts that spell, but then also heals you at the same time. So you can get it right into the middle of them, start fucking shit up with melee, then drop one of these and fuck everything. And as far as yeah, as far as this game is concerned, it's pretty consistent with okay, this you know this creature lives by the water. Okay, it's you know it's probably gonna be wet, so it, you know it, its weaknesses are you know um, electricity and whatnot. Um, you know robotic things, Ro robotic enemies which is a lot of what the main bad guy is in this game robots and and machinery and shit so that's a lot of that is um susceptible to you mean electricity Machina? and shit like that no they, they they have totally departed from that because obviously this is a different universe so but everything from everything from the items you would use in combat to heal yourself and perk yourself up to different items you would be using to make food Two different treasures you pick up on on on, you mean you on random. Play spear ball or whatever it was called? Fuck no, blitz ball. Yeah, that's. So once you pick something, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I got sidetracked because of Sam. Um, <laughs> once you pick something here, see like this one is an antidote, an antidote, but it actually imbues the spell with poison. So not only is it fire, blizzard, and thunder damage, but also poison. And so I have nine of these or ten of these, and I can then choose to. Oops, I can then choose to. Um, Add how many of these I want, and it, as you can see, it, it boosts up that spell. I'm just gonna do one for now, and I'm gonna craft it. 
and then it just becomes one of my spells. Venom cast. And I'm just going to store it. Um, now, the Armager, which I've mentioned before, is uh, just a bunch of really cool weapons that you get. Um, that's that's what, what the Armager is made out of, is a bunch of different weapons. And I've gone to four different tombs here, and it's all just weapons of, of kings of the past. Um, and each one is, is just something different. This is like your normal sword. Uh, this here is like your uh, great sword or, or claymore there. This here is like daggers. And then this here is like your kind of go-between. But there's many, many, as far as I've read, there's many of these that you get to unlock throughout the game. And all of them do different things. But the constant between all of them is uh, the damage that you do with it, while it does a crap ton of damage more than your normal weapons, it hurts you to, to wield. So it's the trade-off there. You can't use it for very long. For very long. So let's go. Um, let's go out into the world here. I'm going to show you some combat. So as you can see here, we're on this quest, and we've been asked to take care of these gotta take monsters. Care of some crabs. <laughs> yeah, they, they got a big problem with crabs out here. Um, but um, in, in these hunter missions, these are stronger than the normal enemies that you'd be that they'd be we facing. Now, that red line up there is telling the you that um, the monster sense that you're there, and as the line stretches across the screen or otherwise gets thicker, um, we're moving closer towards combat here. Now, as you can see, I can select this guy, and I've selected my my weapon of choice, and now I'm waiting for combat to break. Combat has broken now. That uh, that little um, gauge on the side. Holy shit! Did you see that? Um, that little gauge on the side uh, is uh, my combat gauge, and when that fills, I have the ability to then give them commands. And so this guy's going to be using his dawn hammer attack. See, so as as he uses that, um, you're given the, the chance to press circle there, and you're able to then kind of do an attack in tandem with him. Um, now, since I've kind of started decking these guys out, um, you, you know, you, you find that, oh, okay, they, they're able to do, you know, a, t a ton of, uh, a ton of damage here and do different status ailing effects on, on, on these monsters. Now, also in combat, as you've seen a couple of times, um, it gives you the ability to block an incoming attack that may otherwise devastate you or, or, or put you back. And if you do press block at the exact proper time, then you'll be able to block that and then parry it. See, so, yeah, well these guys, I mean the crabs themselves, they're not very strong. Um, they're just crabby. You know? So, uh, uh, and also, as you can also see, the blue gauge right above and around all of my weapons that I'm able to choose. Whoa. Is, is something that fills up as well, and that's my ability to use the armager. Now, as you can as you can see, um, I've taken some damage here, um, and all the gauges are are there on the bottom right for you to see. So, mid fight, I can choose. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna heal up myself or one of my teammates. For me, it's real time. For them though, when they heal up, that's all. That's that's all done like point like like at that moment in time combat freezes. So as as I mentioned earlier, Ignis's ability to do this this weakness, this elemental weakness of these guys allows me to just do a ton more damage than I normally would. And depending on how you catch these guys in combat, as you can see, I just did blind side damage. So that's actually going to um, hurt that guy a lot. And depending on how I am able to attack him. Um, they may become what's called vulnerable, which is, is it's just a status effect. Uh, let me try this weapon. Barely hanging on. It's because he sucks ass. Um, here you go, Prompto. She says, as you can see, combat just stops. Um, and also these point warps are for you to just take a breather if you need to. So you can just kind of hang out here and take a breather for a moment. And regain health, regain magic points, whatever. Damn it, Prompto. Sir, you suck ass. Okay. So, and and you always have an overabundance of any kind of uh, any kind of items that you would need. Oh man, they got me. But even if I'm down, I can uh, resurrect myself. It's when that gauge uh, that you see there goes down to zero that we're really in trouble. And if you if if your teammates die, it's fine, everything's good. But if you die, game over, man. Game over.
So that's combat, guys, and it, it can be pretty off-putting at the very beginning because it, it becomes a clusterfuck. But if you know what's going on and how the game plays, it kind of gets easier. And that two days left on the Chocobo is because apparently the Let's king go. can't afford to pay for one, so he has to rent them. No, yeah, Chocobos in this game, um, you rent them. I mean, I don't know, in the previous games, I don't have much experience with, with riding Chocobos in the, in the previous games, but if I remember correctly, in Final Fantasy X at least, Chocobos were something that you purchased, and it always has been that way. Um, so let's see where we're going here. Now, as you can see on the map here, there's many different, many different points of interest. Minerals, you know, dungeons, different towns or, or pit stops, side quests, treasures, you know, a cafe or, or, or shop where you can buy items and whatnot, and your car in different points on the map. So, this is telling me to go return this quest that I just completed to this guy at the crow's nest. So I'm gonna go do that. So I can now either Might travel. Might actually be faster just to go straight there rather than stop getting your car. And... Well, that's the thing. That's the thing. Now, uh, as you travel on the trocobos, they gain in levels, and that helps you with, I guess, fighting and combat. But then also in different chocobo races that you can do. Might still pull off a wedding. We'll cross that bridge when we come. Now you can stop and have and and have your car towed to you or called to you or you can just fast travel to your car but since I've um, enabled the uh, getting extra extra points from just ride or from just riding around on my chocobo I'm just gonna kind of tough this out now as you can see in the top right hand corner right next to the chocobo the two days chocobo and the mini map there you see the indicator for what time of day it is. That does that does change just as you're as you're playing the game. And, I mean, there are day and night cycles. Like I said, we might be able to see one as we're as we are uh, riding around here. Thanks for the ride. But yeah, it's it's no bueno nice during the ride. With... And you can drive manual if you want. I'm just gonna drive auto, just so I can focus on uh, talking to you guys about the game. So I'm choosing the point by which I want to get to. I'm not going to fast travel there. We are just going uh, to drive. Ignis, little cover here. Oh, the cool uh, guy drives. Just a moment. Yeah, the cool guy is the driver, usually, unless you want to drive specifically. Now this this car can sustain damage if it's too close to combat, or if you're manually driving and you run into stuff. In which case, you will have to fix it, or if it's damaged enough, will need to be towed. So, like, are they your Brothers or just no, friends? no, 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 no. Or cousins? They are your bodyguards and friends. Yeah. Oh. As you were going to meet this Luna Freya, that dude Gladio is your bodyguard. Then this guy here is also one of your bodyguards and confidant. And then he is like a high school friend or school friend um, that you brought along for this specific journey to go meet this chick. I wonder why. Now this journey, <laughs> however, this journey has kind of gone awry, but. Um, Usually I take these these moments while we're going on these long drives, or drives, because this one isn't that long, to just kind of plan my next move. And you can also, as you can see here, shop from the car and then just grab items. So while you're so on the road, next? you don't have to actually go room. to a town it's to grab unlocked. items from the town. But as, as I said before, I didn't level up just now. All the Those experience... Doors are weird. I know, right? Fucking cool. All the experience I just got right now is stored. So once I go and sleep for the night, then I may level up. If you were to now. die before then, would you lose it? I never have died before, so I don't know. Maybe. But more than likely, when I when you die, it just has you load. In the last Are those arcade percent. machines in that corner? Yes, and you can play pinball. <laughs> yes, you can. Almost everything awesome. is almost everything is interactive. Um, you know, this, this radio telling you about the Empire attacking, different people talking, you can greet passers-by, um, and stuff like that. But in this in, in this situation, Kenny I'm going to talk to this guy at the you. local watering hole. He's paying me for hunting down well these killer done. crabs. Did he want you to get the crab meat so he can cook it? And as you can see, as you do more and more of these hunt quests, you get more and more ranks in being a hunter. And different hunts need to be specific rank for you to do. And sometimes, depending on the hunt, 
the animal only shows up either somewhere? in the daytime or, or the nighttime. Dare I hope here is that somewhere? So in this so in this particular case Lob's the show. I have these two I have these two to, to check out and this guy I need to be rank 5 for. So I can take this quest and join the hunt and go fight these guys, but I won't do it now. Cuz we're kind of coming to the end of this review. It looks like um, he wants to eat little children. So this guy only comes out what the the guy? Yeah. The cook? Yeah. Uh I think what he's doing is he's he's looking for the little children. He's looking around us like, yeah, you guys have any little kids? So this is asking me if I want to wait until nighttime to fight these guys. I don't. So I'm just gonna say no, and then we're Can gonna go about our day. Pray for your success. Oh, you don't want to show the eating mechanic? <laughs> I'll show it in a moment. Because <laughs> the eating mechanic is simply in that in that place. It's simply you ordering a plate of food and then it putting what looks like a plate of food in front of the camera, and then that's it. <laughs> I love how you said it instead of he. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It. The game. It. Oh, I thought you were like, yeah, that guy is fucking a shitbox and he's weird, so... No, no. Another not... another reason why you might it's need to, to tow your car is because of gas. You might have noticed that there was a, a, a like a fuel gauge in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. So every time I'm, I'm at one of these places, I just kind of <laughs> fill it up. And we're on our way. Wow, the king gets his own gas? As far as voice work is concerned, everything sounds good. I mean, I never, I haven't bumped into anything and I've been like, wow, that was horrible voice acting. But then again, I'm not really one of those guys that gives, like, a lot of shit about that. Unless it's, like, game breaking. But yeah, I mean, for this being a an open world game, it, it looks... I think as decent as it can for how big of a game it is like like this is crazy and again no loading screen no loading screens for anything in here unless you go to sleep or unless you fast travel or unless it's like some kind of scripted event and then I'm sure there's a whole other continent that I just haven't gotten to yet so and and in, in this scenario you, some areas are being blocked blocked by the the big enemy that the Empire here so like your access to you know your home your home country here is blocked and in other places as well but so the capital is like just seized and they're not they're not letting anybody in or out right now no this is a blockade by the empire wow yeah like the, it's, uh, it, 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 it's story wise pretty good story wise we tried to go back immediately, and no, they weren't having it. So, um, but that's pretty much the game, folks. Audio-wise, it's... Did they say what happened to your army? Uh, yeah, I mean, in, in the cinematic, and I, I can put up a, a, a little short of it at the end of this video, um, the Empire hits you with everything they've got, which is like these gigantic Dreadnought-class ships. So you are completely caught off guard and unprepared for the attack, and you get Wampus stomped. So, and I mean your your technology is very very impressive, and the king himself, you can tell he can use magic and he's very advanced. But the guy that goes after him, he's just relentless and is unaffected by anything that the, that, the, that the king does. At this point, I think I'm just gonna uh, leave you guys with this impression of the game. I've been playing for 29 hours and I like it. Is it worth $59.99 your original equivalent? I think so for the amount of hours I'm going to put into it. If, if you put, if you say dollar per hour, I will get $60 worth out of this and more. And I just heard recently they're planning an expansion for this game. Even more. Holy shit, I almost left out the most annoying fucking part of this fucking game. Look overhead, Noct! What? What's happening? Where's with? Oh my God, Empire guys! How did they know I was here? And why do they come every five fucking minutes when I'm not in the town? I don't know, but it's stupid. Like I'll be done. I'll be done fighting these fuckers, and another group will show up. Like why? Why game? Why? Okay, so I know that these guys are weak to lightning, and I'm gonna leave you guys with this. Um, I'm gonna fight these guys. Oh my God, they're all assassins. 
I'm gonna fight these guys and I'm gonna show you how magic works and also how the armor works. So as you can see, magic is actually pretty nice. Damn it, Prompto. You <laughs> stupid piece of shit. <laughs> fucking get up, you fucking baby. Oh, he just straight up died. <laughs> yeah, Prompto can't handle his uh, assassins, I guess. Um, I'm going to use the armor now. And as you can as you can see all these guys are more um, a higher level than I am. Alright, so let's let's use the armager. And then also I'm gonna do it again. See, so that does like a ton more damage than you use than you than you usually do. So that's the game guys. Um, if you want it, I'd say get it. Um, as one of our first official reviews, I'd say, yeah, man, this game is worth getting. It has some parts that are annoying. Um, the quests don't really jive with each other. Like, you really, like, there's no purpose to do any of these side quests except for, more, like, moral reasons. Like, yeah, I need to help out this weary traveler. Or XD. Or, I mean, but, yeah, I mean, like, story-wise, there's no reason to do any of these quests. Game-wise, yeah, I mean, they give you items, they give you XP, they give you gil. So absolutely, that car just disappeared. <gasps> Must have been the demons. Fucking ghost car. Anyways, guys, uh, my name's Eric. And Sam. Thank you very much for watching this review. We'll see you Peace next out. time.